Hey, it's Leo. Just a quick note before we get started. This is actually part two of our spoiler-heavy Mintat episode, so make sure you've heard part one before you proceed. Anyway, just wanted to let you know, thank you again for listening, and we hope you enjoy. Now let's transition over to sort of part two of this episode. Yeah. We would be remiss if we did a Men's Head episode and we didn't mention (laughs) many of the very notable characters in the Dune Saga that you'll come across. And the the, many of these characters play a huge role. They're Mentats. They're main, they're adjacent to our main characters. And we, again, we would be, we would be totally remiss if we didn't mention them. So there are some notable Mentats that we just briefly want to touch on. And I think the discussion we sort of wanted to have here is instead of just talking at you about these mentats that you have already read about in the books, we actually wanted to sort of have a discussion about the idea of mentats. Like we've established thus far, they are human computers. They can do things like store immense amounts of data, process it, hypothesize off of it, run simulations, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, They are still human, with very human emotions, with very human faults. So the question that I sort of want to posit, and the thing I think we want to make sure is the the through line of the following discussion here about these Mentat characters is, is their humanity a strength, or is it a weakness? Right. Is being sort of a cold, calculating, totally subservient piece of technology like my MacBook— better than being a person who can do things that a MacBook can? Like, does the human part of you help you be a better Mentat and help you do better calculations, or can it hinder you? Uh, And we're going to talk about some of these characters and the ways that, you know, it does either or. And, you know, maybe we'll come to a conclusion by the end. So our first character here is the Fear Hawat. The Fear is... A Mentat assassin. He's been working for House Atreides for three generations. He's an old, old, old dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is renowned across the Imperium for his cunning and honor. Uh, like this is something that you see in the book that people have mad respect for him. They're like, "Whoa, he's <laughs> great. He's really he's solid." But in the book, he falls prey to false information fed to him by the Harkonnens. Oh yeah, and wrongly assumes that jessica is the traitor and he's so convinced he's just so convinced and he's kind of shitty about it yeah so through fear i mean he he's an example uh, okay we have a few we have a few examples of types of mintats like kind of a sampling of mintats right through fear is like a classic vanilla mintat yeah <laughs> he's been doing it a while he's at a big with a big family across multiple generations he is a mentat assassin but it seems like a lot of the ones we meet are um but otherwise that's he's just he's old and kind of shitty towards benny jesserit which who can blame him on some levels yeah well the the thing the sort of key thing about the fear that comes up here for me like you said he falls prey to this fake information that the harkonnens feed him and wrongly assumes for a majority of the first dune book like basically up until the end until his death he assumes that jessica is the traitor and this to me raises like a really interesting question about the nature of mentats this idea that they're only as good as the data they have right right? they're if they're computers who process and store and hypothesize with data as we've explained what if they're given bad data do they come up with bad conclusions or do they have, you know, safety measures against that? Like, is that a weakness for Mentats or is that something that Thufir has fallen prey to because he is older? You know, his age, like you've mentioned, three generations is a long time to be doing that job. He's on the older end of the Mentat spectrum and you have to assume that he's, you know, maybe slowing, like his faculties are maybe slowing down. Like, he's got wisdom and age, but at the same time, maybe he's not as sharp as he used to be with his calculations. And right. again, like like a lot of millennials experience with their boomer parents, <laughs> maybe he also has, like, deep-seated biases against the Bene Gesserit or deep-seated beliefs that he now 
can't overcome because like we've said he's still at the end of the day very human with very human faults and emotions he may be able to able to calculate around them at some point but he ultimately like he's an old guy and he falls prey to like to me what seems like the most obvious of pranks you know pranks <laughs> like oh yeah the harkonnens are giving me bad information like haha you know like if you've been f- working for the Atreides for three years, how do you trust anything the Harkonnens say? <laughs> I know. Three generations of our Ar- Atreides, and you still, like, trust. But keep in mind, Abu, we read the first book with a bias in favor of Jessica, right? Like, we go through the first book going, oh, yeah, Jessica, one of the main characters. Great. Now, by Children of Dune, we see Jessica a little bit more objectively. We see her as a member of the Bene Gesserit order yeah and we get an impression that the Bene Gesserit are shitty are really they're all they're super manipulative they're always up to something really into breeding which you just don't want to be into you know (laughs) yeah you you know just secretive genetics there's there's a lot and the other thing is they are very secretive right like there's a lot to the Bene Gesserit that most people don't know right so when you put yourself in the position of Fufir he is not in our bias of I've only read four chapters of this book, you know, and I like Jessica. I think she's great. She fucking killed, like beat the shit out of Stilgar amazingly, which was glorious. Mm -hmm. And I consider, I was like, Oh my God, she's the best. Thufir's over here with a much deeper and more, lengthy experience with the Bene Gesserit in general. So I think when I read the book, I I had this reaction to Thufir like, wow, he's an old biased asshole. But I think now looking back, I almost think I was naive as a newcomer to the Dune universe going, why are you being so mean to the Bene Gesserit? They never did nothing to you. But they did everything to everyone for For generations. (laughs) 14,000 years. They've for so fucking long there were Benny Gesserit on Terra yeah it's a wild journey and to be suspicious of them only makes sense now to be fair yeah part of the generalist training and part of the advisor training almost certainly involves in being aware of what's going on in the world you need to be aware that the Harkonnens are shitty and are always trying to one-up right and sow seeds of dissent so I do think that he's to a degree at fault, but I think he's less at fault than it is easy to say he is with the experience of having read the first book. Like, I think if you read the first book, you'll go, oh, this guy's a fucking old bigoted asshole. But I think yeah. he's working with a ton of data and some of that data is not accurate. But if he has information that the Bene Gesserit are a shitty order of manipulative, secretive witches, literally, and then from someone that he knows is not trustworthy says, hey, a secretive kind of manipulative person is doing secret manipulative stuff yeah. that that could give credence to what otherwise would be considered bad data. Right. I don't have to be a mentat right. to connect those fucking right. dots, right, 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 you know, right. like, yeah, no, that's a uh, that's a very good defense of the fear. Leo. Like I I'm definitely now recognizing that I also read the first Dune book. Just kind of being like, is the fear an idiot? Like he's supposed to be <laughs> yeah. supposed to be like this great mentat advisor, human computer, but he's falling for like the most rudimentary trick in the book. Uh, but I, I think I, it's I, a woman <laughs> with her wiles. And it's like, wow, greatest mind in the universe. <laughs> She's being tricky. <laughs> exactly. Like you. Yeah, I I think you're totally right. Like, not having read Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, and not having understood the larger picture of the Dune universe, coming into the first book, my impression was the same as yours, that he's he's just kind of like in like this old sort of bigoted guy. And uh, how dare he attack Jessica? She's awesome. But understanding the larger scope and understanding that he has three generations worth of knowledge of the universe and who knows how many (laughs) decades of training. Yeah. He is a suspicious guy, naturally, and he's going to come to the conclusions that he will, based off of his many, many years of knowledge. Ultimately, though, he does spend a a lot of the book in Harkonnen captivity, which is really interesting. Uh, He 
is racked with guilt during this time. He thinks he has failed the Atreides' house. He wasn't able to defend them. The Atreides have fallen. The Harkonnens have won. He's been captured. And he spends a lot of his time in captivity, subtly trying to basically bring the Harkonnens down, which is kind of badass. You have to give him credit for that. He is still on a mission, despite basically having lost his entire life. Imagine working three generations for people that you love, and then watching them wiped out by basically by your actions by your failures it's it's got to be tough but he's out there still fighting for most of the book yeah to sort of come full circle with our conversation about the fear i want to ask you going back to our through line here about is the fears humanity a, a benefit for him is it a strength or is it a weakness do you think his age was a factor because we got to remember he makes a number again under a lot of pressure under a lot of stress dealing with this whole Harkonnen, Arrakis, Atreides situation, he makes a lot of mistakes. He doesn't think Yu's conditioning can be broken, Dr. Yu. He's, again, sort of biased against the Bene Gesserit, c- consistently calls them witches, thinks Jessica is the traitor incorrectly for most of the book. Uh, and he's very suspicious and distrustful the entire time in the book, uh, which, again, in his defense, I would be too. After three generations of political plotting and scheming, I would also be a very distrustful person. But do you think Leo, his age was a weakness for him? Do you think he's a mentat past his prime? Is that a human condition? The idea of aging, which is something all humans do, it's inescapable. Do you think that made him a weaker mentat? The human part of him? I I don't. I, I don't think I'm at a place. I don't have enough data, Abu, to ah. to come to eh, mentat jokes uh, <laughs> to get to a point yet of of drawing a conclusion of like humanity. It, it, like, does it help them or not? But I think with Thufir and the specifically the things you brought up, he didn't believe the conditioning could be broken because it could not be broken according to everyone in the universe except for eight people. That's right. had never been done. It had never been done. So that's that's bad data. If you've already ruled out someone because of data that was given to you, of course you can't settle on them and then who's who else is there? And again, to your point about Benny Jesserit, which is he is super unnecessarily hostile <laughs> <Yeah>. throughout the book. <laughs> like he's he's clearly pretty shitty about this stuff and maybe that's just him being an old man who doesn't give a fuck anymore what people think about him. And he's no longer the eager to please and maintain his employment mentat. He's just jaded because he's been in this family for so long. So, so you you think you you don't think ultimately that his aging or his humanity is what makes the fear make these mistakes. You, you think it's you think it's actually logical for him to make these assumptions based off of what he knows of the universe. I think that he undeniably makes mistakes, but I think that considering the what information he would have been given the data sets he would have been given i can understand why the conclusions he came to incorrectly were the only possible conclusions given the data that he had which is to be fair the data that everybody had we you and i and anybody who's read dune have the added benefit of like having entire chapters with peter as he's talking about this thing that no one knows and that sort of omniscience is not accessible to specific characters. Right. So right. He, his aging, if anything, I think he's again, he's like shitty and mean when he doesn't need to be. <laughs> I don't know that we see any instances of him doing something and someone going, wow, that was slower than it would have been if you were 200 years younger. But yeah, I, I don't know that I have any conclusive reason to believe that, through fear is is uh is suffering in his facilities as a mentat because of age Hmm. interesting it, it, i take it you disagree <laughs> that's interesting i would actually play a little bit of the devil's advocate here because i think his age is a factor like regardless of his knowledge his deep deep knowledge of the universe his experience over all of these generations of working with the atreides i think he's potentially not the mentat he once was and I think that's the human part of him. Like, ultimately, all mentats will grow old and die, right? You would have to assume that their computational abilities also slow down with age. Mm, that, I think yeah. that's a very human condition that we all deal with. All of us will eventually hit our prime, which I feel like I'm very close to 
going over the peak, <laughs> starting to decline, and all of us will eventually age and decline and die. That that's a very human experience. Um, Typical humans, exactly. <laughs> and I I think like mentats don't overcome that necessarily, right? They they haven't figured out how to not age, and they like the Benny Jesuit might have. They like ultimately still have to combat that. And yes, maybe their training helps them understand their own weaknesses and calculate for them. But alt, you know, at the end of the day, I think aging would still be a factor for a mentat. And given how like how old we know the fear is, I think his age has you know maybe not slowed down his calculations, but definitely hindered them. Mm, okay. And I think his long held biases over many generations may have. M- you know, nudged him towards making so many of these mistakes that he does in the first book. And that's maybe something that computers don't deal with, right? Like a computer doesn't age necessarily, like it can slow down, I guess, over time, and maybe the software will outgrow the hardware. But in in the sense that like a computer has cemented biases (laughs) over time, as it ages, like that's not a thing. Like my MacBook isn't going to (laughs) become more and more obsessed with you know, Firefox, the more I use it and then not allow me to use Chrome, <laughs> you know, like that in, in that sense of like aging. And that's really funny. I don't want to turn this into like an okay boomer attack against the fear, but like, it is this idea that like, I think that the human part of him hinders the mentat part of him in this one, in this one instance. Yeah. And I think it leads him to, to make those mistakes well, that he does. You know what? I see your side of it. I see your point. You make a lot of sense. Uh, agree to disagree and those of you listening tweet at us what do you think (laughs) yeah i I think it's i don't think there's any right answer here i I think it's just a very interesting thing to explore it's definitely and it's so worth exploring because when we start uh, okay well let's talk about peter yeah because this continues the exploration (laughs) yeah definitely peter and thufir are very much two sides of the same coin in the first book yeah so peter de vries DeVry's DeVry University (laughs) Peter (laughs) Peter DeVry I'm so tempted to call him DeVry Peter is a twisted mentat in service of the House of Conan he also graduate of DeVry University 4.0 GPA (laughs) (laughs) oh god the the DeVry school of the mentat arts I've heard of it that's head canon though (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's toy laxu it's just okay we're gonna have to take 20 minutes and just write a full story about the school of devry on toy laxu <laughs> okay twisted mentat oh house god Arconan. that's funny twisted mentat house harkonnen uh he is actually responsible for the death of dr i always said this ua i don't know you you said earlier again pronunciation not our strong suit tweet at us i i in my brain i always said dr you oh that seemed like the easiest thing to say so uh yeah so he is actually responsible for the death of dr you or, or ua's wife um and used that incident to break the the conditioning that dr you was under the the souk school conditioning which according to every person in the universe that you could ask was utterly unbreakable. If someone, if someone had been conditioned in this way, they, they would be endlessly loyal. You could never turn them. They would never betray you. But this is the one instance uh, that we know of where this happened. Yeah. And it was at the hands of Peter DeVry university. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And you, you have to, I don't think we can stress enough how monumental this is. Every Atreides in the Dune, in this first Dune novel, wonders who the traitor could be. And every Atreides immediately writes off Dr. Yu because of this Sukh school training, uh, this Sukh school conditioning. Right. Like, it is that understood in the universe that this cannot be broken, that not a single Atreides is suspicious of Dr. Yu. Right. And Peter comes in here and finds a way to break this conditioning by using his wife as a a bargaining ship, basically abducting his wife and then telling Dr. Yu that he needs to basically blackmailing him that like, I won't let you see your wife or I'll kill your wife if you don't do what I say, which seems like a very basic way to break that conditioning, (laughs) but I'm sure there's more involved to it. But again, you have to hand it to Peter's creativity here, whether that's because of his 
twisted mentat nature and he could think of like a nefarious plot like abducting and murdering someone's wife maybe a normal mentat working under normal ethical conditions would not even consider something like that but peter here does and he manages manages to do something the universe has never been able to do but again speaking of peter as a twisted mentat we mentioned earlier that the baron and house harkonnen have used prefer to use twisted mentats again they're the they're the bad guys they like to use the bad mentats and peter is to me proof that mentats can be manipulated that they are not immune to normal human manipulations like a computer might be the baron continuously throughout the novel will play to peter's worst instincts to peter's addiction to spice and ultimately to peter's desire for power his deep-seated ambition for power these are all things the baron knows about peter and these are all things the baron manipulates peter with right. and i think that proves that no matter how good a mentat peter may be he might have broken a six school conditioning that no one in the universe could he's still not immune to very normal human manipulation right and when we when we actually see inside of peter's head in his chapters and he's uh, or his sections of chapters and we're hearing his thoughts he thinks you know later on in children of dune when we get this like there's a segment that i'm going to talk about in a bit about duncan idaho and some of duncan idaho's thinking as he computes in that mintat way and that feels very alien to me as i'm reading that because i'm like oh i've never thought that way i've never made those connections i've never done what he's doing Peter just sounds like an angry dude. Yeah. <laughs> like his internal monologue is is so much closer to a normal human, I think, quote unquote. It's worth noting that he's manipulatable, which, which really seems strange. You know, you're you're tricking Firefox into going faster. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Firefox like really really wants power and you manipulate that. You're just like, "What? <laughs> Firefox? What the fuck?" <laughs> Where, where did this ambition come from? From DeVry. Yeah. I actually I actually um, dug through the Dune book, and I, I pulled some choice quotes because, you know, I, I don't want our listeners to think I'm making up all of my hypotheses. I'm about to back it up with some data. <laughs> so... Oh, shit. So page 27 of Dune, very early on in the first novel, the Baron is in the room with Fade Rotha and Peter, and he calls out Peter's incorrect calculation, again... Twisted Mentats are known to have less accurate predictions and calculations. Peter calculated incorrectly that Jessica would bear Leto Atreides a daughter, like she was ordered to. And we all know she didn't. She defied that order. She had Paul instead. So there's a quote here from the Baron. Quote, A most efficient Mentat, Peter, wouldn't you say, Fade? Efficient, Peter, but he's still emotional and prone to passionate outbursts. Efficient, Peter but he still can err, end quote. And that right there, the Baron just flatly lays it out for us. The Mentat is still prone to very human emotional outbursts of passion and anger, and the Baron knows this, and he uses this. He knows that this Mentat that works for him can still make mistakes. And instead of seeing that as a weakness, the Baron sees that as a way to manipulate and to, to use Peter in any way he sees fit. On that same page, page 27 of Dune, Peter replies sullenly, quote, did you call me in here to impair my efficiency with criticism, Baron? End quote. And that's interesting, too. This idea of, like, if you criticize a human, of course, if you criticize someone over and over and over again, like, he'll doubt himself ultimately about it. And that's so interesting. Again, Peter gives us some insight into mentats here. You can impair the efficiency of a mentat, impair their computations, by introducing self-doubt, by criticism. Very interesting stuff. Like, small little lines here that I didn't pick up on my first run-through of Dune, and now after consuming the encyclopedia, <laughs> I'm suddenly like, wow, there's so much here in just a couple of lines. Uh, and this manipulation just continues throughout the rest of the book. Um, I had another quote in here about, on page 267, the Baron says to Peter, this is after, like, Jessica and Paul have been captured and... Uh, they're in the room with like a, a captive and tied up Jessica. The Baron says, quote, understand yourself, Peter. You want her because she was a Duke's woman, a symbol of his power, beautiful, useful, exquisitely trained for her role, but an entire duchy, Peter, 
That's more than a symbol. That's the reality. End quote. Again, the Baron manipulating the part of Peter that's hungry for power. He offers him Arrakis. He offers him the planet of Dune. You want to be the governor here? Do it like work under me. You are my representative here on Dune. It's yours. Right. Obviously, that's a lie. Jessica is sitting there like tied up like, yo, the Baron's lying to you, my dude. (laughs) Yeah. And Peter is so blind to that, even though he's a mentat, even though he's a highly trained mentat is so blinded by his ambition and his greed that he agrees to that deal, to a deal that he should know, having worked under the Baron so many years, is a lie. He falls prey to that. He falls prey to, again, very human weaknesses like greed and ambition, and ultimately it's his downfall. It's really interesting. And again, maybe that's because he's a twisted mentat. Maybe that's just a weakness for all mentats. I find myself as I'm like reflecting on the mistakes that he makes in the same way as with Thufir, there's actually a fair amount of this that can be explained through. There are elements of Peter that are kind of undeniably well twisted. I mean, right, he, he has this like crazy lust for Jessica, right? Like, Oh yeah. And again, you're totally right. There's this moment, this pivotal moment where he knows he's even thought about and said that he's he's like I, there's no trust between me and the baron yeah. and the baron's like i promise you a whole planet with the only <laughs> source of the best <laughs> drug in the universe on it and peter's like yeah it seems legit clearly making some broad mistakes but the mistakes that he makes like for instance that we we meet peter with him having this conversation about the mistaken calculation that jessica would bear a daughter right but that was based on the fact that the Bene Gesserit had this long, long, long plan that maybe even Peter was aware of, culminating with the child of Fade and the daughter of Jessica and and uh, and Duke Leto. Yeah. Now, the fact that Jessica chose to have a son because she had fallen in love with the person that she was assigned to breed with was something that I think we forget in our bias of meeting that as the first example of a Bene Gesserit, you know, concubine individual. We forget that this is probably the first time in thousands and thousands and thousands of years that this has happened. So within the lifetime of Peter, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is a data point that has never existed and may never again exist, right? We we forget how much Jessica defies data (laughs) and defies precedent, right? Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I love that we've taken sides of this war. Like, I'm over here shitting on Mentats, and you're like, but, Abu, think about it. Well, it's like, it's a flawed, limited <laughs> tool. Like, the Mentats are a limited tool, because what what does it mean for information to be accurate? Yeah. And from a certain perspective, something might be true, but if you don't have enough data, and it also doesn't help that we're looking at Mentats and their ability to calculate based on data... And we are following heroes through an adventure, which in its very nature as a narrative story is going to break precedents left and right. Yeah, it's like against the norm. That's what makes it an adventure. That's why we're reading it in the first place. Yeah. Uh, Also, even just historically, like a god emperor that lives 3,000 years. (laughs) Big deal. Unprecedented, to say the least. I imagine Mintats after... Do Leto the second rises to power as the god yeah. emperor oh worm my man gosh. and they're just like fucking i have no idea you're like hey what's gonna happen tomorrow they're like <laughs> who's to fucking say ask the worm i don't know man <laughs> we're gonna go get high with john do you want to come <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's so true i didn't even think of that can you imagine being a mentat being like a worm being a god that would never happen i'm a mentat i know what i'm talking about <laughs> and then tomorrow on the news wait what happened yeah. yesterday <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> suddenly your entire existence is thrown into question <laughs> and at a certain point you know leto the second's like we'll get rid of mentats and the mentats are like you know what fine we're yeah done. you know what we're done. we suck <laughs> we suck we can't you know about it's fine whatever fuck it yeah. sure <laughs> okay um all right leo we have gone so long on the, this is going to be such an epically long episode but we have to have to talk about duncan idaho so let's wrap up today's episode with a with a final discussion about our boy duncan Hida- idaho right, right uh slash hate because it's not the duncan idaho we meet in the first book he's not a, a, a mentat 
slash Zen Sunni philosopher. It's actually the Gola that we meet in Dune Messiah, who is hate made from the dead body of Duncan Idaho, reanimated uh, or cloned. It's it's a little unclear how the Benny Tleilags are manipulating it's, that. From my understanding, it's it, it's some amount of body, like the Golas are some amount of the dead body yeah. that they put in the axolotl tanks where they like grow humans. Uh, so th- yeah, they, they basically grow them, but it's so, it's so much. Oh, and man. as a quick caveat, we will absolutely be doing a Duncan Idaho episode. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So t- yeah. T- today's discussion is mainly going to be focused on the Mentat part of Duncan and particularly one instance of him being a Mentat, but there's so yeah. much Duncan to get into that he deserves his own two hour long episode, <laughs> kind of like this one. So uh, again, like I've mentioned, we're talking about Hate, who is the Benny Tleilax Gola, that's actually H-A-Y-T, and in Arabic, hate actually means life. That's so cool. Uh, which makes sense for someone who was given life through the dead Duncan Idaho genes. He is a train. he's a Gola, trained as a Mentat, and a Zen Sunni philosopher. And the interesting thing about hate, again, speaking of things that are unprecedented that keep happening in the universe and in the stories of Dune... Thanks to Paul, he is able to recover his sort of genetic cellular memories of Duncan Idaho. So Haight is knows that he came from Duncan Idaho the entire length of Dune Messiah. But near the end of the book, Paul is able to sort of tear apart and untap the internal memory of the like the genetic memory that Haight has. And Haight becomes Duncan Idaho, right. like, has all the memories of Duncan, the emotions of Duncan, all of that rushing back in, and he sort of fully becomes Duncan Idaho, fully becomes the person he was cloned from. Again, unprecedented. Agola has never been able to do that before Duncan Idaho. A lot of shit happening that has never been done in the universe before. Um, but that that is so interesting that he is he's a mentat, he's a philosopher, and he's the first Gola to ever recover his genetic memory entirely. He also... So he's a, he's a mentat. He exists, in my opinion, as like the perfect example of how a mentat can be strong as a mentat. We we have a couple of examples so far of Peter and Thufir being kind of shitty and coming up with bad explanations with incomplete data. They're one of the most like electric, riveting passages for me in the first three books of this series is we are we are with duncan or or hate we are with hate well well by this point in the story he's duncan because he's he's recovered everything this is this is children of dune that's true so yeah this is children of dune uh, and this was what was it i I think i even page 188 uh 188 in my copy of children of dune again no guarantee that this is everyone's but the moment is basically it's his final moments with alia where he is he first of all already kind of feels that she's wrong you know and this is something that a few characters like comment on that she feels cold or she feels like vicious or has this uncharacteristic violence because at this point she is fully possessed by baron harkonnen uh abomination but (laughs) they describe because we're kind of riding along in his perspective they describe what a mentat's computation might look like beat by beat Mm -hmm. and it was so incredible like, I love this first this first little paragraph. Abruptly, his mentat sensorium clicked into full awareness, and his mind leaped into the frozen trance where time did not exist. Only the computation existed. Damn, that's so cool. He's entering into... I, I think that we are told a lot about mentats and what they can do, but this is really the first time that we're kind of seeing it in such a clear way and it being described so beautifully. Yeah. And he basically given relatively limited, but what happens to be accurate information and observations that he's kind of created and synthesized as someone just being there and being present and aware, he comes to some incredible conclusions on his own without, you know, with, with really without a lot of data to work with, which is awesome. And this is clearly the power of, it done right yeah the other thing that i think is really powerful about this is all of this computing is coming up with these conclusions that you know alia is 
possessed by Baron Harkonnen. And that is such a heartbreaking thing for him because he, as Duncan Idaho again, loves Alia. Yeah. And this idea of computation in spite of love and coming up with accurate data in spite of what it means for your wife is tragic and is something that doesn't exist with computers. Right. Again, you're never going to go to fucking Firefox and search something on bing.com and <laughs> Firefox be like, well, I want to show him the results, but it's going to mean he switches to Chrome. Like, it's just not going to happen. So it's it's a it's a distinctly human moment. Right. But I also think that Duncan does a great job of jumping back and forth between there's a lot of times when he's not really in Mintat mode because he's other things as well. He's a philosopher. He's a Goa. Yeah. He remembers his death moment. Right. There's a lot going on there. He's he's a husband to Alia. There's a lot of moments where he he's genuinely human. And you're totally right. This is one extremely striking moment in Children of Dune. And I, I remember it so distinctly, you know, like I almost I like I was there in the room with Duncan and with Alia while he was coming to this realization that the love of his life, the woman that he's married to, is no longer herself, is an abomination, has been like totally taken over by a monster, and not not just any monster, but the Baron Harkonnen, the right, the, right. the rival of the Atreides household, like the villain for the Atreides, has now taken over a Atreides, his wife, the Atreides Alia. And like it's it's an extremely heartbreaking scene, a huge insight into into the Mentat trance, you know, this almost like trance like state where he crunches all the numbers, crunches all the data, and comes to this realization, this heartbreaking realization. Quick aside, this podcast is probably never going to get sponsored by Mozilla after today. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. We'll, we'll just have to pick on everybody. Eventually, we'll have to we'll make jokes about Oracle, and we'll make jokes about Safari and, and yeah, Internet Explorer. Yeah, we're coming for all of you. We don't want any sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did actually pull a quote, speaking of how like beautiful and touching this moment is, uh, on, on page 193 of Children of Dune, there is a quote. The moment goes, and he said, goodbye, my beloved. She did not hear the finality in his voice, and even kissed him lightly as he left. And all the way down through the sights like maze of the temple corridors, Idaho brushed at his eyes, till Ilaxu eyes were not immune to tears. And that's where the chapter ends. So beautiful and sad. My God. Also just... My eyes were not also not immune to tears at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. So terribly sad. But I think you're totally right. This is, this, is a, this is a moment in the Dune saga where we see a Mentat operating at his peak. He comes to this conclusion, and instead of this data sort of crippling him, I think the human part of him keeps him in check. He still loves this woman. She's his wife. She is the de facto emperor of the universe right now because Paul's children, Leto and Ganema, are too young to take the throne. So she's the regent of the empire. And this is a moment where he could have called her out. He could have been like, yo, is that Baron Harkonnen in there? <laughs> he could have He could have raised the alarm, you know? like, Hey, that you? <laughs> If you're Baron Harkonnen, clap your hands. She's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's the test for abomination. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, I think he could he could have raised the alarm. He could have immediately tried to, you know, I don't know, overthrow her, tell the guards, tell other people, tell Princess Hyrule and anything. He could have panicked. He could have used this data and done something with it. But I think... He used a mix of both his human love for Alia and his Mentat training and probably made the call that the best thing he could do at this moment was to leave, say goodbye, and covertly disobey Alia's order to maybe stop, like, save her, help her, defeat the Baron, get rid of the Baron, uh, and if B, remove her, if necessary, remove her from power. Like, I don't think that's a calculation... That's a very far-reaching calculation that I don't think a computer could make. Right. You know, if 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 Firefox, if I if I open up Firefox, <laughs> and let's say that I am uh -huh. not that I encourage this or do this, of course, FBI, whoever's listening, 
but l- let's say I'm trying to torrent something. Firefox has built-in defenses because it's coded that way. It's created that way to stop me from going to dangerous websites that may download malicious software onto my computer. The, Firefox doesn't decide that the best action, because it, it loves me and wants to take care of me and wants to see me be a better person, is to instead not stop me from downloading the book, but teach me that piracy is wrong and I wouldn't download a car if I could. You know, like... Oh. You know what? The, t- the delay lacks it. They, they pirate everything. They... <laughs> Notorious you pirates. No, they pirate everything. They got LimeWire open on every one of their computers. Dude, LimeWire throwback. <laughs> so, I mean, that that might be like an incomplete and bad example, but uh, like the point <laughs> I'm ultimately getting at is, I don't think a computer could have made a far-reaching calculation that both both accounted for the personal relationship between Duncan and Alia, their love, their years t- spent together, and also the consequences of. Alia succumbing to the Baron Harkonnen and what that means for the Empire at large. I think Duncan made an incredible computation here and did what he thought was best for both Alia and the universe to try and preserve both of them. Preserve Alia, preserve the Empire. I don't think a computer could have done that. I think the human part of him here helped him from not acting erratically or out of fear or out of simple mentat training. This isn't quite devil's advocate, but I I think as an alternative possibility, I think about one of the downsides of the mentats in general, and we might have mentioned it earlier, but mentats very seldom were leaders. They were very seldom the decision makers themselves, right? They, their job was to gather information and to propose hypotheses or to propose simulations of what might happen you know and it's possible that he duncan had in his in his mentat awareness you know 10 15 simulations you know going forward into the next few months doing this doing that doing that if he had decided to confront alia put her to trial or or do something that would lead to her immediate death that would cement a certain range of future possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what he did was the smartest thing. I think it was the best. Obviously, it it leads to the good guys winning or or the morally ambiguous guys winning (laughs) and the morally definitely evil people not winning. (laughs) But part of the brilliance of his decision to leave and to covertly disobey is that it is in line with his being a mentat, that he's not going to make a decision, a super definite, big, massive decision on incomplete data. How do you free someone from possession? Right. <laughs> I don't know that that answer exists in the universe because yeah. it's like this legend that the Bene Gesserit talk about, but they don't talk about it. This isn't like a, 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 a well-known thing. So I, I, I just, I think he probably threw forward some simulations and he probably made some decisions based on that but i think also that what he decided to do is is something also that firefox couldn't do (laughs) is go i'm not going to show you results because we don't have enough words and you would be you would you would regret seeing results from this search or something (laughs) yeah 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 Uh, patience you know like i think the idea of patience patience like he decided action at that moment would be more harmful than waiting and finding more data to work with and you're absolutely right like a computer cannot make that choice a computer will always do what you tell it to you press a button the computer will take action right right. here a button is pressed for duncan he he realizes this horrible thing about the woman he loves right he chooses not to take action and i think that 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 that's a compliment to him like that that is inaction was the best choice he could have made there amazing and that that's a result of his training and the result of i, I think the human part of him as well and you said that so much better than me <laughs> <laughs> no we all we all understood what you were getting at leo it was great we love you Whew, okay I, I honestly have lost all sense of time. I don't know how long this podcast episode is going. Yeah. Let's wrap it up, Leo. We we have to wrap yeah. it up here. I would love your final thoughts on this sort of back and forth debate we've been having about whether Mentats and their humanity is a strength or a weakness. We've talked through a couple of different examples, through fear, Peter, the mistakes they made, the breakthroughs they made, 
to be fair. And of course, we talked about Duncan and the you know the actions he took with the data that he was able to compute. There there's a lot of factors here. What, do you think? And you know, again, there's no right or wrong answer. I think, but do you think that being human is a strength for a mentat, or do you think at the end of the day? this galaxy is still missing something that a MacBook could give them. <laughs> I think, I, I think, and maybe this is a little bit of a cop-out answer. I think that they are very different tools. Um, computers lack agency. They're like a hammer or a saw or an abacus, whatever. They do what you want them to do. And if you're, if what you need a, a computer to do is nail nails into a piece of wood it's not great and in that case you want a hammer mintats are as we are introduced to them in the dune universe a set of a, a set of multiple tools that you can use and within their arsenal of computation they have abstract thinking and they have mm-hmm. loyalty and they have love and they have these other elements which can be useful and sometimes they're not i think as Leto makes the decision, Leto II makes the decision in world that Mentats are not part of the future necessary for humanity's golden path. He knows more than I do about it. <laughs> uh, I don't know that I can like ration, like rationalize my way to a, a, a differing opinion on Mentats than Leto II made. Yeah, you're no worm, I'm, Leo. I know that <laughs> it's much. It's true. As much as I try, ooh, like squiggle around. <laughs> But I, I think that in this universe, they are better than computers, but I think that they absolutely have their weaknesses and shortcomings. I am resistant to holding against all of Mentats the mistakes that we see in the book Dune, because the book Dune is a fantastic collection of the first time in histories <laughs> that something's happened. Oh, yeah. It's a glorious collection of precedent-breaking instances where Mentats are particularly ill-equipped for these one in a trillion exceptions to the rules. So I think it's easy to read the Dune books and go, wow, Mentats, they suck. Mm -hmm. And I think that ultimately they, they, they are not good for humanity, hence Leto II gets rid of them. But I think somewhere in between, they are very clearly useful to the universe for thousands of years. The ones that we meet, especially duncan uh, is incredible in his abilities so uh yeah i'm uh, i give them a four and a half out of five on yelp <laughs> what about you do you do you, i know throughout this this conversation you've been kind of leaning towards the the more critical of them but yeah w- yeah what are what are your thoughts on this yeah i mean i i think i've certainly especially when i was doing research and looking up quotes and building our script for this episode, I I certainly found myself leaning very much towards the argument that Mentats, their biggest weakness may be their humanity. Like we see time and time again that Mentats react to things emotionally or make mistakes uh, or make leaps in logic, which you would think they would be trained not to do. But again, because of their emotional connections their human connections their human faults they can we see time and time again they make mistakes but i will say this discussion with you has genuinely been enlightening for me like the the idea that we continue to break precedent in the dune saga things that have have not happened for thousands of years tens of thousands of years how is anyone supposed to predict that right the the, the freaking quiz that hit iraq is born <laughs> and potentially multiple times by the way because paul and then Aaliyah, and then his children and then his children and then also duncan is is yeah in, in brian herbert's books is proposed as the actual uh quiz sesh his, his right <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so just taking that fact into account and it, it's honestly something that i hadn't and like wasn't thinking about while writing the script and i initially came in ready to sort of go toe to toe against you and like really defend this idea that i think humanity their humanity is a weakness for mentats but throughout this discussion i think i've changed my mind i think you are absolutely right i think mentats are a tool and like any tool they have specific 
uses that they are good for. They have certain weaknesses that hold them back or make them bad for other types of computation or uses. And at the end of the day, like any other tool, I think the answer lies somewhere in between. Uh, their, their humanity can be a strength. Their humanity can be a weakness. But the way to utilize a Mentat and the way to for a Mentat to utilize their abilities properly is to understand their own limitations and their own potential. Uh, so I think the answer lies somewhere in between. Uh, I, I don't think we can definitively state that, yes, being human makes them worse computers. And uh, we can't state that computers would definitively be better than Mentats. Yeah. There are cases and instances where one will be better yeah. or the other will be better. You know, like sometimes Firefox just does what I need it to, <laughs> you know? And I was going to say... <laughs> As far as, like, finding the right job for the right tool, can you imagine a worse thing than, like, a worse problem to approach with Mentats than a universe ruled by a god worm? <laughs> 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 like, we're talking about the limitation. I mean, computers would also be fucked. Like, they wouldn't work either. This is like, okay, guys, we need you to uh, come up with some uh, uh, simulations. And they're like, okay, what's the data? And you're like, god worm? Uh, ruling the universe. The known universe. Like, I give up. <laughs> I, I quit. I'm right. no longer a mentat. <laughs> right, right. Uh, only, I'm going to go be a janitor. Only Frank Herbert's brain could have come up with something it's like so that. Good. It's so good. And it's incredible. And it's why we love Dune. Well, friends, there is no real ending. It's just the place where you stop the recording. But this podcast is always one step beyond logic. So help spread the word of Muad'Dib and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, be sure to check out the other shows on the Lore Party Podcast Network on loreparty.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at lore underscore party. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, he who controls the podcast controls the universe. We'll see you on the golden path.